Hello and welcome to Practical Cytology brought to you by the AMR Vet Collective. My name's Patrick Shearer and I'll be taking you through some basics to get the most out of your cytology uh, both in-house and when submitting to the diagnostic lab. We'll be going through the basics of microscope setup and maintenance, sample handling and some general tips to, to get the most out of your diagnostic decision making process. With your microscope, the basics of any scope are the eyepieces, objective lenses, the stage, and the condenser and aperture. Now, each of these needs to be adjusted to get the most out of your image, and each of these parts needs to be cleaned regularly and often. The most common problems we see are slides left on the stage while they're still dirty with the light on, and incorrectly adjusted eyepieces and aperture. All of these add up to give you a dirty scope and poor image quality. Clean the lenses every day. The best way to do this is with a cotton tip swab and distilled water. When you're using immersion oil, each time you've used oil, wipe the lens down with a Kim wipe. Don't use tissues and don't wipe down dry lenses or you can leave dirt and scratches. Adjust the eyepieces next. One will have a ridged adjustable ring and the other will be plain. Use the coarse focus knob to bring the stage into focus looking down the non-adjustable eyepiece and then adjust the focus in the other eyepiece by turning the ridged ring. Then adjust the condenser. Open the aperture all the way and use the knob on the side to raise the condenser height all the way to the top. After that, you're ready to start. Make this part of your practice's daily setup and cleaning routine and you'll make sure that you get the best quality out of your scope. How you handle your slides makes a big difference to sample quality. Try to minimise handling so you can avoid artefacts like fingerprints and squames from your fingers accumulating on the slide. Keep slide boxes and cover slips covered when you're not using them. Dust builds up very quickly and really interferes with sample quality. Label slides in pencil. Labelling in pen is easy, but the ink will dissolve in the solvents used in the various stains. Write the patient's name and the site sampled on the frosted part of the slide and then when you collect the sample, make sure that the sample goes on the same side as the frosted part. The two main stains we use in the hospital are DIFQUIC and GRAM. DIFQUIC is excellent because it shows cell morphology really well, it's quick and easy and it's cost effective. Now you need to be aware that with DIFQUIC the stains need to be changed regularly and it may not show up mast cell granules all that well. Gram stains used to identify bacteria and it's great for tape preps, ear cytology uh, and samples from purulent or flocculent body cavity effusions uh, to guide your antibiotic therapy while you're waiting on culture and sensitivity results. DIFQUIC stain consists of three components, a fixative and then solution one which is eosinophilic and solution two which is basophilic. Now a couple of tips to get the best out of your stains. It's good to have separate kits for clean work like fine needle aspirates and then again for dirty work uh, like ear swabs and tape preps. Make sure you cover the, the stain jars as soon as you're finished working with them to stop the, the material evaporating and you can further minimise this by putting some cling film between the jar and the lid. Now, How often you change the stains will depend on how many preparations you make and how dirty the preparations are. As a rough guide uh, you can make roughly 50, 50 preparations uh, before you need to change the stains and once a week is, is generally a good starting point. Now if you think you're seeing bacteria or fungi you can stain up uh, a clean new glass slide uh, to double check or just change the whole stain. The gram stain consists of crystal violet, iodine, a decolorizer, and safranin. Gram-positive bacteria stain up deep violet to purple and gram-negative bacteria stain up pink to red. And finally, some general tips. With needle aspirates, try to get two to three collections per site and make two smears per collection. Send in two to four slides per location or lesion if you can and stain one up in-house so that you can check that it's of diagnostic quality uh, and also make some notes and compare with a lab report when it comes back. 
with fluid samples, make some smears in-house and submit those along with some fluid in EDTA and some fluid in a plain tube. When you're packaging your samples, package samples for cytology separate to any samples for histology. The formalin fumes will leak out uh, during transport and can fix the material on the, on the slides, making it non-diagnostic. And then if you have any questions, get in touch with your local lab. Uh, we're always more than happy to talk about uh, a case or sample collection, anything that will help you get the most out of your diagnostic dollar. And then all of this information can be found at amrvetcollective.com uh, where you can browse, download or share. And that wraps us up for today. Thanks very much for watching and I wish you all the best with your diagnostic investigations.